Pooja, do break it down for us, an understanding for our viewers on what are the possible scenarios that could play out in court. That's right, Nabila. So we cannot speculate what the top court of the country will decide, but there are some scenarios that are emerging, specifically two scenarios, and I want you to help and understand what precisely does that mean. Now, scenario number one will be if it's a split verdict by the Supreme Court. It's a two-judge bench, two justices likely to also differ in their verdict. So that's one scenario. What happens then, which means if it's not a unanimous verdict, it's a 1-1, one -one, then it goes to a larger bench of the top court, which means a three-bench, a five-bench, so on. What happens in scenario two? What if it is a concurring judgment, which means it's a similar, it's the same judgment, read differently, because there could be different reasoning that comes in. What does that mean? That means that both the justices will have a similar verdict, but what led them to take that decision could have different reasons, and that will be very important because it could set a precedent of why the justices have taken that decision and could set a precedent. Nabila, over to you now again, because this, remember, is also about a legal fight and the street fight. So this is going to be very important. The country is looking at this verdict today. Well, you know, uh, Pooja, this is of course going to be a much awaited verdict, not just for uh, women in Karnataka, because this will be a landmark decision, a precedent set for across educational institutions in India. Now, Shrishti, who's tracking the court, Shrishti, give us an understanding. The kind of arguments that went on for at least a couple of weeks, in fact, the judgment, we believe, was reserved on September 22nd. So it's been a few weeks now that the bench has been mulling over it and now will be deciding to give their verdict. Uh, like I said, this will be really a landmark judgment that will be taken uh, into account across India in every educational institution. Whether or not institutions say that it all depends, or the governments, respective state governments say it all depends on the educational institution's decision to allow hijab or not, ultimately the Supreme Court's verdict will prevail. Well, yeah, like you said, we're looking at a very important, crucial verdict to come from the Supreme Court today because, uh, you, you know, the issue that's involved here is uh, not some, it's, it's, it's been highly debated, debated extensively, discussed extensively in the last few months, and uh, not just in the country, but also internationally. So the verdict will definitely have uh, a bearing on not just, uh, you know, the petitioners who are involved, but even otherwise, because there's some very important constitutional questions that are involved, which we're expecting the court to answer based on the arguments that were raised before both the Karnataka High Court and now the Supreme Court. As we know, the Karnataka High Court had upheld the ban that was put uh, in uh, government educational institutions on the uh, hijab. Uh, and when the order was finally passed by the High Court, the High Court had held that hijab is not an essential religious practice in Islamic faith and therefore the protection under Article 25, which talks about freedom of religion under the Constitution, will not be extended. Uh, the High Court said the Quran does not mandate wearing of hijab by uh, women because there's no penalty uh, imposed on people who decide to not wear it. Uh, according to the High Court, the decision of the government to prescribe a uniform dress code was also not discriminatory or violative of Article uh, 14 or, uh, you know, the right to freedom of speech and expression that these people have, uh, or that, that the Indian citizens have under the Constitution. When the matter has now come up before the Supreme Court, we have seen many senior lawyers appearing for different petitioners, including uh, the Muslim uh, women, uh, girls who uh, were in fact not allowed to go into uh, institutions uh, if they were uh, wearing uh, hijab. Uh, the main line of arguments which has been put forth before the court by lawyers was firstly obviously around the fact that whether uh, hijab, wearing hijab is an essential religious practice in the Islam or not. This has been argued on behalf of some of the petitioners where it said that the protection on the right to religion will be extended, should be extended because it is in fact an essential religious practice. Uh, other lawyers uh, appearing for the petitioners also argued that even if it's not uh, an essential religious practice, it has become a part of the religion over the years and the protection under Article 25 should still be extended. Another argument that was uh, put forth by the lawyers was that uh, the ban on hijab has actually led to a very discriminatory reaction where, the, where now women are uh, you know, uh, there's denial of education as far as these women are concerned because uh, women are not being allowed to go, uh, get into the schools. In fact, uh, a report was quoted by the petitioner saying that over 17,000 women have allegedly been, uh, have allegedly had to drop out of these schools since the government order and the high court order has been passed. So it's the petitioner's case that the state's uh, stand here, the state's concern should not be on whether to maintain uniformity, but in fact how to make sure that these uh, women actually get access to education education. Uh, if you look at what the arguments put forth by the state, the state has argued that 
they are not against any religion. Uh, it's not discriminatory. The order that they've, they've, they've uh, uh, you know, the order regarding a uniform dress code does not discriminate against Muslim women at all because the order is not religion specific. It's not against any religion. It's not in favor of any religion. All the state wants is discipline in these educational institutions. Mm. And the issue is not about hijab. It's the fact that there should be discipline and there should be uniformity. It's the state's stand that uh, when these educational institutions which are in fact secular operate any form of religion right. religious symbols can in fact not be allowed in fact the solicitor general had also told the court that you know there yeah. may be involvement of some other agencies and organizations like PFI in the protests that were held uh, on the issue right you know we, we saw large scale protests and we know that these women who are the petitioners here are really hopeful that they get some kind of relief from the Supreme Court but what has the Supreme Court really observed uh, Pooja from what we hear the Supreme Court has very clearly said orally observed there's no uh, written verdict is yet, that's what's awaited today, but orally the Supreme Court has observed multiple angles of this case and one being that first of all Supreme Court is, uh, first of all hijab is not banned in India, it's only about restricting hijab inside educational institutions and a few more observations, why don't you take us through? So in the 10 days marathon hearing that took place in the Supreme Court over the past few months and in fact in the month of September specifically, there was then the verdict reserved. But there were some observations that the Supreme Court had made while the hearing was on, both from the petitioners and the government side. Now, some of those observations is that uh, head hijab or the headscarf specifically is not essential practice with regard to Islam. And that perhaps became one of the big observations by the Supreme Court, that it's not because there was a point of if it's a religious essential practice or not. So according to the observation, it was not. But also that the school has a right to prescribe uniform, that there is a reasonable restriction that that can be put forth by any educational institutions and the students abide by it. Also, remember there was this uh, conversation and debate whether this is similar to the Sikh male students who wear the turban. According to the observation made by the Supreme Court that you cannot really ha compare the hijab or the burqa to the Sikh kada or a turban as a religious symbol. Over to you again, Nabila, because this is going to be a mega debate. But until the verdict, there's going to be, of course, a lot of... Uh, Anxiety, caution, watching what precisely is expected, this will have repercussions in other institutes and states. Undoubtedly, uh, Pooja, and this, this could turn into a law and order situation. In fact, while the Supreme Court has uh, looked into multiple angles of this case and while orally observing, let me point out that the Supreme Court also very clearly mentioned, orally observed, that maybe allowing hijab inside educational institutions will also lead to religious acceptance among students from a very young age. But will that really culminate into a positive verdict for these women? Let's find out. Possibly in an hour and a half, we'll know better.